Good morning, ladies. I hope everyone is having a great Saturday morning. Today, I want to review chapters 4, 5, and 6. But before we get started, let's refresh Life Interrupted. In part 1, chapter 1, 2, and 3, we learned how our plans don't always align with God's plan. When we think we got it all together, God will bring a life interruption. Let's look at Jonah. Jonah's first chapter, first verse reads, The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. We found in verse 1 and 2 that God told Jonah to arise and go. These are action words. God interrupted Jonah's comfortable lifestyle, eating good, enjoying the family, just having a great time. Then God shows up and tells Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh, not just visit and look at what's going on. Still, God told Jonah what to do. Preach to the people of Nineveh. There was a significant amount of sin and wickedness in this place, which was a life interruption. This was not in Jonah's plan, but this was Jonah's assignment. We learned that we are all created with a specific assignment or purpose. There is an assignment that is to be completed for the kingdom of God that only you can complete to God's satisfaction. God has a predestined assignment for us. We should ask ourselves every day, what is it? that God wants me to do. Every assignment is not church related. God does not always give you an assignment to volunteer to work in a ministry in the church. Most of God given assignments are not affiliated directly with the church at all. Your assignment for the week could be to shine your light on someone you work with. Deliver a gift to a friend. Call someone to encourage them in the Lord. Or learn a particular biblical lesson so that you can share it with someone along the journey. Most people go week to week without any consideration for what God has planned for their life. People tend to think God's destiny as a total plan. Since the mind is so focused on the future, it gives a very little thought to now. At the last meeting, I remember reading Jeremiah, the first chapter, the fourth and the fifth verse. Let's reread it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So before the foundation of the world, before God formed thee in thy mother's womb, he knew us. What do you do now is only a manifestation of what has already been done in God's eyesight. You may call it a life interruption when things don't go as planned. But God has given us a free will. That is, we have a choice to make in life. And God does not make us do anything. We can accept his commandments or reject them. And there is godly response for both. When you accept his terms, there is a response. When you reject his terms, he responds. 
God never allowed Jonah to select his assignment because he knew what Jonah responds would have been. Not me, Lord. Now, let's dive into part two. Chapter four. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Page 46. Verse three reads, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tasha. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tasha to flee from the Lord. So why was Jonah running away from his predestined responsibility? Primarily because he did not like the assignment. Jonah was selected in what we wanted to do. Jonah wanted to select in what he wanted to do. His first reason for running was a matter of allegiance to the Israelite people. Jonah felt that people like the Ninevites did not belong with the flowing stream of God's mercy. Jonah's whole ministry had been focused on foretelling Israel expansion and prosperity. Up until now, page 47. You see, God was not asking Jonah to go. He was telling Jonah to go. Now let's turn to page 55. Now, let's talk about Great Escape and Tasha. Jonah made a choice to disobey and reject the assignment of God. In fact, Jonah ran in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Jonah, of all people, should have known better than this. Running from the Lord's business? He knew God to be omnipresent everywhere at the same time. He was running as if he could hide from God. Jonah was not running from some place. He was trying to run from someone. A few folks are asking God to do certain things in their life. But they are running in the opposite direction of God. Some are praying. And some are running at the same time. Runners never receive the abundant life that God has planned for them. So even though we know that God is omnipresent, he still went to the seaport, city of Joppa, to take a ship to Tasha. The Psalms wrote in Psalms 139.8, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I want to tell you this morning, you can run, but you can't hide. Let's turn to chapter 5, Slippery Slop. Slippery Slope. Here we have Jonah stepping off dry land, going into the boat as a runaway passenger, page 62. In the beginning, the ride was so, wasn't so bad, so Jonah decides to take a rest in the lower bunks to get some sleep. The decision that Jonah just made will have an impact on his tomorrow. So the decision we're making today will impact our tomorrow. The way we respond to the interruptions we're facing right now will have a bearing on our life's direction next. Look what happened to the prodigal son. He came from a wealthy Christian family and decided to run from his father's house to a distant land. Sound like Jonah. He round, round up in a pig pen, desiring the slop he was serving to the pigs. 
Then he came to himself and realized how far he had fallen. Page 66, down, down, always down. We look around and we wonder, how did I end up here? Then we recognize who we are, who we belong to, and what our responsibility is. Down is always to get to, but never easy to get out. Let me say this again. Down is always easy to get to, but never easy to get out. Especially when, like Jonah, you're too knotted up within yourself to notice when you drifted off to sleep and don't realize the depths to which you're falling. Let's move on to the next topic because I'm feeling good. The next topic is hard to see. You think all is well, but don't realize that you fall down on a slippery slope. The enemy loves seeing you there. He tries everything he knows to keep you from realizing where you are. Just like Jonah, when he was asleep in the storm. Let us give Jonah the benefit of the doubt. He was exhausted, escaping, hoping things will look better in the morning, depressed, didn't care what others thought, and justified when he was comfortable with the decision he had made. Page 67. Jonah's problem was that he didn't want to yield to God's will. Page 69. Chapter 6. Wake up call. Verse 4 reads, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a great storm arose so that the ship was about to break up. Let's call this an interruption within an interruption. Page 75. Now God will intervene again. He sent the storm to slow down Jonah's journey. God couldn't stand by while Jonah ruined his life. God sent the storm not to take his life, but to return it more fully to him. The reason we may be facing storms in our life is that God is just slowing us down. Jonah should have thanked God for the storm because where he was headed was nothing like what he had left. We should thank God for the storm anytime we are on our way out of God's will. How could Jonah sleep? when the storm was terrifying everyone else. How could that be? Page 76. Now that the storm is raging, the sailors were afraid and began to cry out to their numerous gods. Now in verse 6, the captain is telling Jonah, Get up! Call on your God. Get up, Jonah. Call on your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. Satan does not send every storm that comes in your life. The same storm we have been praying for God to take away could be sent by God to calm us down because we will not change. If you still possess a negative attitude towards God, then expect the storm to continue to rage. Now verse 7 reads, Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Page 77. 
Sometimes you have to live and travel in someone else's storm. Wow. There were some things you had to go through that was not even meant for you. Doesn't that make you angry? Sometimes the problems surrounding you are not caused by you. It is caused by someone near you. Let's look at verse 8. So they asked Jonah, tell us who is responsible for making all of this trouble for us. What do you do? They asked Jonah. Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? These were specific questions that God wanted Jonah to reflect on. It was a reminder of who Jonah was created to be. Just think if it hadn't been for the storms that caused us to remember who and whose we are and where we are headed, we might not be here today. Page 77. So how did Jonah answer them in verse 9? He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. After all the questions Jonah admitted it was his fault. If we are causing problems in other people's lives, then we need to accept responsibility for our actions. Tell them it's my fault. As the scripture ends, it turns out that Jonah's storm didn't just do him some good, it affected others too. Verse 16 reads, at this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Page 81. As you can see, our Lord can get a lot done with divine intervention. Look at God. The sellers pray to Jonah's God. They recognize a difference between this God and the ones to whom they had previously prayed. The storm caused their attention to be turned to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is able to take the pits and pieces of our leftover and making something amazing out of it. God is able to take the pits and pieces of our leftovers and make something amazing out of it. He gives beauties for our ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that he might be glorified. Our last thought, if you are in a storm pattern right now, wake up, look around and find your bearings again. Thank God that he made your life so uncomfortable that you changed instead of shaking your fist towards heaven. You're his child and he alone knows what's best for you. Be blessed. May God continue to bless you.